Every single occupation, every single way of making money, every single person has within them the ability to care for somebody else. Welcome and thank you for joining me today on this daily devotional journey. We're going to read from the book of Leviticus today. Now, Leviticus contains a lot of laws. And what I read here, you're going to find some of these familiar. These are really close to the Ten Commandments, but there's a difference. And I want you to listen carefully for the difference between this and the Ten Commandments. We're going to read Leviticus 19, verses 9 to 18. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall not strip your vineyard bare or gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely and you shall not lie to one another. You shall not swear falsely by my name, profaning the name of, the, of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not defraud your neighbor. You shall not steal, and you shall not keep yourself from wa- keep for yourself the wages of a laborer until morning. You shall not revile the deaf or put a stumbling block in front of the blind. You shall feel your God. I am the Lord. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, with justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people. You shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Did you hear some parts of the Ten Commandments there? Did you hear some familiar thou shalt sort of sounds there? But there was more to it, wasn't it? They expanded on some of these ideas. And truly, they're the conversations, the lessons, the laws that you and I need to hear today. And I think a lot of our society needs to hear these. And sometimes we look at the Ten Commandments or we look at the rules in the Bible and we think of them as being fairly onerous. But truthfully, of what I just read, what ones of those are not just basically the bare minimum of being a decent human? But there's one particular one that I want to draw to our attention that I want to focus on today, and it was the first that I read. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and the alien. This is basically the equivalent of saying, it's more important to me that people who don't have food can get food than wringing every last drop of profit out of my work. This is that very elemental opposition to selfishness. Take part of what you do and leave it behind so that somebody else can pick it up. Take part of what grew and make sure that it's available for those who don't have any food. Take part of the work, the labors of our hands and make sure that it gets into the hands of people who need it. Now, many of us do try to follow these instructions. Lots of churches, lots of religious organizations have systems and processes and methods to make sure that people who need care are taken care of. But we do also live in a society where the church has a smaller and smaller place. And there are fewer and fewer people who want to care for people who can't care for themselves. I don't know particularly what the solution is to that, but I know that we need to keep talking about it. I know that we need to keep it in the forefronts of our brains and our hearts We need to talk to our neighbors about it. We need to address it at a personal level, but then also at a level of when we are doing business or where we do business. Every single occupation, every single way of making money, every single person has within them the ability to care for somebody else. Now, just like another story in the New Testament where the widow who had two copper coins, Jesus said she gave way more than the very rich person who gave a huge amount. Each of us have 
differing abilities to give. But what this piece of scripture is asking us, reminding us, calling us into, is to make sure that we do just that, that we give, that we take care of people who can't take care of themselves. We might not be farmers. We might not have vineyards and fields where we can leave the gleanings behind so that people who can't eat can pick up what's there. But we absolutely have the ability to leave some of what we've made in a fashion that others can benefit. Now, just before I close off, I want to remind you that this isn't just a commandment. And depending on what your relationship is with God and with the Bible, a commandment might be all you need to do this. But let's step aside from pure altruism for a moment. And I want to remind you that as you develop a healthier relationship with your money, with your resources, as you intentionally set a piece aside, your opinion of where your value is and where money's value is and where the things you own, where their value is, it will change entirely. And many of us who find ourselves being owned by our things rather than the other way around, one of the best ways to solve that is to give away some of what we have so that we know first off somebody else is being taken care of. And then from what's left, we reward ourselves. I don't mean that any of us need to live in abject poverty by choice. If that's what you would like to do, marvelous. Please do that. But more importantly, please take care of others. Of course it's good for them, but it's also good for you. Let us pray. Creator God, we know that you are the giver of all things. You give us the skills and talents to work and to achieve and to earn to make it so that we can feed and clothe ourselves, that we can take care of our families. Remind us that these are the gifts from you. Remind us that we are called to share these gifts so that all the rest of your children may also be taken care of. God, it's difficult at times when money is tight, when we're not sure where our next paycheck's coming from, or we don't know if we're going to pay the rent bill or the electricity bill, it is very difficult to find space in our lives to care for others. Help us to know that in those moments, it's us who need to be taken care of. But when money is not tight, when we're doing fine, Help us to develop a healthier relationship to our sources of income so that we share them. So that rather than grasping and holding on, we see this world as a place of abundance where we can open up and share, knowing that there is enough for all. Thank you, loving God, for creating an earth where there is enough for all and for creating hearts of selflessness that encourage us to care for others. We pray this in the powerful name of your risen Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you again for joining me. If you are new here, I invite you to watch this video or that video. I'll see you again tomorrow. I love you all. Bye for now.